I, I mean, if we're gonna actually do serious chess analysis, I don't think there was so much could have done differently there. Look, uh, the on, the only thing was- You could just say that I played well, and then we- Don't say on. that. Just say it, I'm gonna clip it, I'm gonna put it on my, you know, background. You played flawlessly. I mean, that's- He's that's lying. He's lying. Chat, clip it and ship it, baby. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. This taking in mind expectations. <laughs> ah, there's the catch. I was doing a practice game, I'll resign. I wasn't preparing. You sure, Alex? Very nervous to play yeah. the 10-year-old Magnus. All right, you guys, so we have the app on our phone, the Play Magnus app, and what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be playing Magnus at the age of 10. That's what we agreed on, right? And in the app it says, At 10, I played in both junior and adult chess tournaments, including my first attempt at an international master qualifying group. I finished with five draws and five losses. If you are 10 years or younger, you can beat me at age 10. You should <laughs> definitely continue playing chess. Your chess future is bright. So I really like that line. <laughs> no, uh, hang on. If we beat you, is our chess future bright? Wouldn't you have to be 10 or younger in order for that to be true? <laughs> that could be true while also being true if you are 10 or older, you know, and it's not specified here. Hey, the French. We're playing and why'd you ruin my geometric setup? This looks better. No, it doesn't. Much better. Okay, continue. Okay. So here you played knight c3. Does this look like what you actually played at the age of 10? I think that's pretty reasonable uh, i remember i had a few games there in some win hour lines uh where i got uh, outplayed in some very close positions i think i also played line with uh bishop d3 but i think i only started playing that when i was 11 so yeah it's uh, it's very realistic okay and we sent you a link to the analysis board also if you want to be able to see it in real time uh let let us know if there's any issues with that you touched it again Okay, I honestly think I would have a better shot trying the London against him and Alex trying the French. Andrea, we're playing him at age 10. We have to work as a team. I don't want to work as a team. I want to try. Okay, we're going to play. So this is, the, this is the main line um, in the Knight of Six um, French. I don't remember too many games that I had back, back then. Uh, with this particular line, uh, I think most people were playing the win hour, uh, bishop b4, to be honest. But I, I definitely looked at, at these lines back then, so in that sense, it's... Um, what What pretty, are your uh, thoughts on the McCutcheon with bishop g5 instead of e5 on move 4? Uh, I think the Mc McCutcheon is a decent uh, opening, uh, but in general, it's more fun to play for, for white than... And for black, since with white, you're usually the one who's going to end up having serious uh, attacking chances. Okay, well, luckily for us, your 10-year-old self didn't actually go into the McCutcheon, so... Uh, Andrea, I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to play here. You are on your own for the French. I know absolutely nothing about the theory here. What is the magnometer on the Play Magnus app? <laughs> Uh, that's like, that's a, an evaluation bar. Oh, that's cool. So that's how you would evaluate the position? Magnometer. Uh, yeah, uh, magnum. obviously I name, named it after myself, uh, <laughs> the humble being that I am. You're so humble, Magnus. How are you so humble and so good? Oh, God. I don't know. It takes years and years and years of practice. Okay, Alex is being a little bit aggressive on the queen side. I think I'm gonna... I think I want to try my own game as white, Alex tries her own as black. So I'll join Magnus, you know, on the sidelines with the commentary. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, you like being on the losing team, so that's fine, Andrea. We're not on the losing team, it was rigged. Uh -huh, <laughs> I was uh -huh. playing with Anya Taylor-Joy. It had to be scripted, otherwise it would give away who the guest was. It did give you good advice, though. That's what she I did. Thought. She definitely did. But uh, you didn't, didn't follow it. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually realistic uh, in the sense that c5 I think was the old move and after queen a5 uh, there was there's another move rook to a2 that's what I was expecting but I think that was played by Grishuk in 2005 so Magnus 10 wouldn't have known about it which is why I prepared this against you 
Obviously. Yes. I actually went really in depth before the stream, having a couple practice games. But that's what you need to do, being a content creator. It's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. People think it's improv, just winging it while you're on stream. But in reality, everything's scripted. No, absolutely. I mean, when you left our stream when we were on homepage and brought your friend David Howell, I thought that was so funny and so scripted. I was not nervous at all. Yeah, it's, it, it's good. And then, of, of course, you can sort of act like you don't, don't know what's going on. I think that's a big part of streaming as well. Uh, but yeah, people, people got to know that uh, this, is, this is hard work and that's why I haven't been, been doing it. Uh, for me, just I think chess has been a much easier way to, uh, to make uh, ends meet. <laughs> well, Magnus San, that is why we are both his son for content creation. You are helping us with the chess and we are going to teach you the ways of the content. That's very nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, um, this is, but uh, this is uh, been played very well by both uh, both parties. Who's I playing better so far? Don't know that I. I don't know if I actually knew these moves when I was that age, but I, I definitely, definitely could have uh, found them. But I think in a, in a few moves you will sort of start seeing the idiosyncrasies of uh, of young magnus more than you've seen so far so far it's mainly been it's mainly been opening opening theory so uh, you know magnus as a commentator if you were giving your uh commentary advice to the black side of the pieces here would you go for you know perhaps a move like queen b6 or a move like knight e4 just for commentary really this is asking for a friend, right? I only ask for a friend, truly. Really. Sure, I, I would say both both those moves are uh, are reasonable. Uh, I would say this kind of sound very silly, uh, but I would say actually all the moves that uh, take into account the fact that um, I don't see five is threatened, except moves that just hang something. I think they're mm -hmm. all they're all fine. Okay. That was a great answer. So 94 seems kind of juicy, but I'm worried no, that, I'm, he, he that after B4, I'm just explaining my thoughts to the audience. Not not asking for a friend, just explaining for friends. B4 and then Queen C7. I'm worried that I'm giving out a pawn, but you know, young Magnus' king is in the center of the board, and I don't know if he can handle that pressure. So, so time to make a decision. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to play 94. This is actually very similar to a game I had uh, in 2005 uh, against Bareev in the World Cup. I think um, in a similar position, it was like Queen C7, E4, D4, and then C4. We got this type of position where White had the two two against one on the Queen side, and Black had this uh, pawn on uh, on E4, which could be be fairly strong. So I would say. So far, this has been extraordinarily, extraordinarily well played by both sides, and uh, we're um, going to have an exciting battle. Yeah, I mean, your your ten year old self is actually a little bit intimidating. You're playing very well right now, um, Andrea. What and do you think? very fast, right? And very <laughs> fast. Why are you so fast? I thought you're supposed to slow down a little bit. Uh, I, I was really, I was really quick back then. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, all right, so here I'm tempted to take on c4 because I mean my pawn is under attack What other options do I have bishop d7? But then the e4 pawn looks like it hangs so I'm trying to decide between those. I'm not asking for a friend I'm just thinking out loud Andrea, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not, I've never played an opening similar to this. I, I like the fact that Magnus's king is in the center of the board and I'm worried if I take on c4 I'm helping him develop I feel like you, I mean so if I were black I would Bishop try to D7. rush the castle and if they take I would castle but uh oh the magnometer didn't move actually oh I, I I have to subscribe to get the magnometer if I get that is that cheating not really uh because it's not gonna give you actual advice it's just gonna tell you approximately how you're you're doing but here this is uh, first typical minus 10 move, which is queen takes e4. Like later versions of minus would definitely go, not go for that. Because before castling, you really don't want to take take that pawn. 
uh, in general because you're behind in development and uh, just uh, grabbing pawns, especially ones that it's gonna lose you several tempi. It's just not very high on the on the priority list. It may not be terrible. It's just yeah, it's not something um, older me would uh, would have done. Younger me probably would have been like, eh, that's a pawn. I can deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought that young Magnus would be very eager, so I actually played into that. It was all calculated, truly. Absolutely. So here, I don't want to take on C4 because it's going to help you develop. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to castle and chill. That's what I was thinking too. It seems safer. Ooh, are you ready for your move? What would you play here? And then I'll tell you what Magnus at age 10 played. Please don't tell me it was long castles. No, you played King F2. King F2 is reasonable. Reasonable. Yeah. Okay, okay. You're, you're proud of your... If you would go back in time and you could tell your 10-year-old self anything, what would it be? I don't know. It would be, uh, you're gonna grow up and you're gonna be awesome. Just keep <laughs> up the good work. You're so <laughs> humble. I just... I really look up to you as a beacon of humility. Truly. Yeah, that's what I aspire to. Yeah, it's very, very impressive. Hmm, okay, so I'm down a pawn. He takes c4, bishop takes c4, bishop takes g2. It's honestly a little bit tempting. I feel like 10-year-old Magnus is a better calculator than me, so I'm gonna sit here. I mean, here it's only think. rated 2,000. Should, you should actually be better tactics. Hmm, you're right. I should be better than Magnus at age 10. I'm gonna take on c4. Thanks for the confidence boost, Andrea. You're gonna grow up and you're gonna be awesome, Alex. Aww. But you're not 10, so I don't know how shut applicable up, this up. advice don't, is. Don't include that. <laughs> how do you feel about your position now, Magnus? What do you mean? I'm not playing the game. <laughs> no, but it's, you know... But if you're, if you're asking 10-year-old me, mm -hmm. I would say... Mm, good. Good? Okay. I'm gonna he didn't seem too confident. Too. It's like when if I asked him how my game went against you. Uh, I'm going to take on C4 here. Did you ever cry as a kid when you lost games? Did I ever not cry when I lost games? <laughs> That's the question. I, I also cried a lot. I think we all cried a lot growing up, losing games. Yeah, I, I think it's it's really it's really normal. It's uh, it's just uh, how a lot of kids respond to setbacks in general. So I I I'm not not uh, not ashamed of that for sure. Uh, what about King H3? Are you ashamed of that move at all? Slightly. Lightly, yeah. I mean, Slightly, yeah. it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Ten-year-old playing King H3. Oof. How are you gonna become a world champion with these moves? No, I know. We're playing well though. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you realize if I win this game, my score against you is gonna be 2-0, right? Uh, I, I reali realize that. He doesn't um, say yes, he just hisses. I feel, I feel maybe like 10% responsible for that. Yeah, that's fair. It's a decent number. Now I'm really embarrassed because I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to win 10 ma against 10 year old Magnus and I'm going to lose both games. Oh, you'll be fine, Andrea. Uh, I don't know. Just play the French. No. <laughs> no, but you started only playing at age 8, right? Uh, yeah, I knew the rules before 8, uh, but I was a c complete beginner at age 8. Like, uh, at, eight, uh, at the age of 8, uh, I didn't know what the Scholar's Mate was, for instance. So I, I, started, I started, yeah, I started pretty late, and this is me at 10. Uh, a lot of the young guys now are IMs at 10 or close to IMs. Um, so those were definitely different, uh, different days. So, did you ever feel like you were a late starter? And then, I mean, obviously you became one of the greatest players of all time, so this is not uh, a roast. Yeah, for, for sure. I think I did feel, though, pretty early on, in at least in Norway, that I approached the game quite differently than a lot of my, my peers did. How was that? Uh, because I uh, sort of took it more seriously. I was more interested than they were. More of um, a passion. Uh, more of a passion. Like I was studying, studying every day, uh, pretty much for usually for for hours. And others would play 
you know one tournament in the weekend uh, and not mu not much else so it's uh, it's not that surprising that i i ended up surprising <laughs> most people <laughs> yeah, not surprising and, uh, this, this at is all. a great rook ending by the way thank you I i'm guessing you didn't start the studying before age 10 or you wouldn't have ended up here you know sure uh actually uh, my first real game book uh was uh was at age 11. Uh, I, I was a pretty pathetic end, end game player before that. That's how I would describe this my chess. I will say, though, that g6 is a pretty uh, instructive mistake. Because I like the you... first part of that <laughs> sentence, instructive. The second half, if you want to change, you know, because we're on Twitch homepage, I'll give you another chance. So go ahead again. Tell me about g6. The thing about g6 is. At the weakest point in white's position is the pawn on f4. You would love to attack it twice, and for that you would need the king. What I would say is af after you go g6, I can go h4. Uh, I don't know if uh, Miss Ten is going to do that. You actually played king f2, but... Oh, and then I just gave you advice. Okay. <laughs> uh, but if, if minus 10 had gone h4 there, the whole king side would have been kind of closed off and it would have been very very difficult for you to win any of those pawns because uh, the king is just gonna attack them from g3 or f3 or whatever mm -hmm. and you're never really gonna be able to create a pass pawn and on the on the queen side it's one against one you're never winning there so it was very important to keep that route open for uh, for the king to have good winning chances. Well, luckily now really we can good push advice, h4. So I'm gonna play h4. Thank you, Magnus. Fantastic. Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Even I picked up on that one. Uh, and that's actually a very interesting plan. So uh, let's see. I do I play h3 here? I kind of like it. Yeah, I'm gonna push your king away. I'm gonna play h3. A little birdie whispered the idea. <laughs> I will say one thing about h3. I wouldn't say it's it's a bad move. What I will say is that you could have played it whenever. There was no there was no hurry. You were rushing. Uh, Got um, too eager. That's true. ten year old Magnus. Because you don't really know yet whether you need to play H3. So it's better to play the moves that you need to play first. The move that you clearly need to play is King G7, because the king is not going anywhere on the other side, because you're just gonna drop F7. So uh, moving the king the other way first uh, would have been sort of more instructive there. Okay, I guess I, I was thinking that you might end up playing h3, but if that was the case, then your king would be tied to the pawn, right? Exactly. h3 is uh, a bad move because uh, it, um, it it gives the g3 square for the rook. Right. Which means that um, the that square can be used by the rook at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, you have ideas like rook g3, king has to go to h2, then you can go rook f3, and the pawn on f4 um, is falling. Now and, or later. And you don't care about the a6 pawn? Uh, you might. But that's why I said why I said no. Uh, now or later. Also, h3 would take away a, a square from the white king on the third rank, and you really need the third rank. Um, for for the king later you really really don't want the king to be pushed back to the first rank because then it will be very very difficult to defend the pawn on f4 the, I, I think that makes sense so maybe i should have waited on h3 um i guess in in, in the current position i still feel like your f4 pawn is weak uh but now i'm worried that you might play your rook to d7 and put pressure on f7 so i do have to be a little bit careful here um, the rook could have done the same from b6 to b7. True, true. B6 uh, to b7. Yeah. Rook d6 is just a, a. It's a good move. It's just, it's it's a it's a pure waiting move. Right. So now I'm thinking because I have a few options. Uh, if I ever, I, I could try a5 and and try to just trade off, but then I'll have three pawns versus one. But h3 is so far advanced that I feel like I'll lose it. And king h6, I'm tempted, but I need to figure out what to do after king, after rook d7. Uh, it's it's not easy. Oof. If it's not easy for me, it's not going to be easy for 10-year-old you either, though. That's the right attitude, for sure. That's, that's the, what I'm trying to bank on here. Let's see. I'm going to just see if I can trick 10-year-old you. I'm going to play rook a4. Interesting. King g3. 
I... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that, that was a good move by 10-year-old Magnus, and <laughs> I would say now uh, it's uh, looking pretty pretty dryish. Uh-oh. Uh, you could you could she... still you could still trick him. Okay, so then I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back. I'll repeat a little bit. So I'll, I'll go again. Now I'm gonna try King H. Oh. I... He should he should have gone to G4 or H4. That's what I was gonna ask about. Yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. Um, there's no need to go back. He made another mistake. You tricked him, Alex. You succeeded. I tricked young Magnus. Okay, that's very good. Uh, now I'm tempted to play king h5, rook takes f7, king g4, and then try to push your king back and take the h2 pawn. So I'm just going to YOLO. I'm going to play king h5 here. I'm not a very patient player. I would say that this is not not a necessarily a bad practical choice. Um, because uh, he would need to play accurately, and of course he played rook f6 in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so what should have he played? No, yeah. no, no, that was a good move. Oh. No, no, that, that was the best move. Oh, okay. yeah. oh. <laughs> I thought you were roasting. <laughs> that I, was... I, 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 no, no, I wasn't roasting. I would say um, now we're playing for at least two and a half results. For two and a half results? What do you mean? It's it's an expression like you say that you play for three results, win, loss, or or uh, or draw, uh, but like you would still have to make a lot of mistakes to to lose this as black. So that's why I say two and a half. Okay, I I think I just need to unleash the magnometer on the app because it says <laughs> 120. Uh, I don't know if it's talking about IQ or it's just a light bulb, but I would really like to click that button and unleash it. You know. <laughs> It's not IQ for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right. If I take on H2, Rook takes G6. I'm not gonna play King F5 and get checkmated. I'm not that nice. Um, if I play King H4, then you go Rook H6. I go King G3, and it feels like you have a draw. You don't want that. Yeah, no, I definitely don't. So. I also have king h5, which would defend g6, and you can't defend h2 after, so you have to take on e6, but that is honestly very tricky. Um, and then there's also g5. Rook a3 doesn't really make sense to me because you could just repeat and I can't take your pawn. So I, it, for me, it's between g5 and king h5 that I need to think of. That is correct. That is very reasonable. Thank you, so Magnus. So far, son. so good. Well, I feel like I use my call of friend more than I'm allowed to in this game, but <laughs> maybe it's okay. All right, I'm just gonna play king h5. Magnus is thinking. Rook takes, I think I have to take here. And now, what would you play in real life? I'm curious how different it is than your 10 year old self. It's not an easy decision, to be honest. Uh, my first instinct says, rook a6. Um, but also king f3 and rook e8 are candidates. So you played rook e8 here. At least you played a candidate move. Yeah, I think rook e8 is, uh, is a good move. And in general, the position should be, uh, should be drawn now. Uh, but a lot, can, a lot can definitely still happen with, uh, with mutual pass pawns. Uh, okay, so... I'm debating between king g4 and rook h1 here. I don't know if I should care about your king getting to f3. Uh, if I play rook h1, king f3, then I probably can't go h2. I, I think I'm going to play king g4 here. I, I'm trying not to take too long. Uh, that would have been mate, actually. Rook h1, king f3, h2, rook h8 is mate. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can we look at that line again? Actually? Yeah, so uh, you were saying if I played king h1, rook f2. Rook h1, king f3. I would say here it's already a little bit difficult to make a draw. Mm -hmm. Maybe actually quite difficult to make a draw. Oh. Uh, I think you're, you're going to lose the edge pawn. True, which is why I actually calculated Here's all of this and I played king showing g4. Showing for the chat. Yeah. You know, part of being a content creator is making sure that chess is accessible for our audience so that's what i was trying to do here silence yeah. uh, rook g8 uh, <laughs> is, is good the only sort of third candidate move i could see was um 
was uh, rookie six because you really need to um, to grab a pawn on, on on g6. So yeah, rook g8 is is excellent. Okay. Uh, so I think I have to play king f5 here. And you, reasonable. You go king f3. That's kind of intimidating. Yeah. So minus ten is saying no more draw. I'm gonna play for a win now. Um, that's not very nice. Uh, alright, so rook, rook b2 or rook g2, which one am I going to go for and are there any other options? I mean, I, the thing is I don't have that many options here. Magnus 10 is already imagining the YouTube titles now. <laughs> yeah, what would Magnus 10 call it? <laughs> Fun day being homeschooled, beat somebody yeah. at chess. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna play rook b2. Uh, oh no, you're checking me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, this is looks like it's about to crumble. Andrea, I would like some encouragement. I have one. Uh, I'll probably here. lose as well, so we'll, we'll lose together. It's a ten-year-old, two thousand rated, which should be at least one win in there. Oh man, I think now you're we've lost me all our pawns. So something went terribly wrong. Let's yeah, let's... it's it's gone pretty badly here. I would say now after King E7, after King D5, Venice um, would have had to go Rook D6 check to drive your King away, uh, and then take the pawn on G6, and you probably were losing there as well. It's just worth mentioning that um, in case of King, uh, King D5. If you take on g6 immediately, maybe there are some chances because your king can go to e4 after you check the um, uh, check the king with rook b3. Right. So uh, you know but what now would be fun? I would say it's probably lost. It would be fun. Do you think Magnus, at his current age, could save this game with the black pieces against Magnus with the white side of pieces at age 10? Just a thought experiment, if you will. This is a thought experiment. It's yes. not going to happen. <laughs> Damn it! Happen. But, it, you know, just, just to continue that train of thought, what do you think Magnus, <laughs> at his current age, would play in this situation? Just, just you know, to think about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, in, uh, using, uh, using hand and brain terms, probably he would say rook, pawn, or king. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's very helpful. I'm really glad we have you on stream today. You've been very helpful. Would you like to go on another walk with your niece? Don't, don't forget you. when you roasted him, Alex, continuously saying that you beat him. I mean, I wouldn't save this game either. Okay, I'm going to take on b4. Oh, man. I would say rook, rook a6 would be pretty standard here. Uh, h2, rook, h6, h and uh, soon as the um, soon as the pawn falls, it's it's game over. Uh, and then it's my turn. Yeah, Andrea, it is your turn. Um, okay. Because l l let me tell you about the only way you could trick your opponent. That would These. be an interesting topic of conversation. Search yeah. a position. Mm -hmm. um, so let's imagine. Let's just play a few moves like uh, rook c3. Okay, uh, let me just put the current position to oh, catch us up. Okay, so from where we are after king g4. Do, 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 do. Let's go h2. Okay, and then rook h6. Rook h6, rook b6. Yeah, let's let's try that and see see what happens actually. Yeah, uh, and rook h2. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just go rook g6. Okay, I think that's cool to look at. I might be putting it on the app also, just just to check. King f3? Mm -hmm. King f3? No, you're not putting it... Okay. Uh... <laughs> you have a tough opponent here, Magnus. No, I, I was just going to show you a nice little yes, trick. Show okay, us so trick. King f3? You're, you're trying to angle, angle me, and it's not <laughs> nice. No, I'm so sorry. I actually mouse slipped. I meant King f3 to look into your educational line. I wasn't trying to trap you. Uh, so, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. King e6. Okay. YouTube thumbnail. Magnus loses to himself at age... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Rook a2. Uh, okay. Rook a6. Ooh. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Oh, okay. going for the four scale This is mate. nice. This is nice. Uh, I would say this is the only way 
you can you can trick people in in these endings and uh i've seen this this trick been successfully uh, successfully used many times what a nice uh, but trick. yeah in reality you're you're dead lost so yeah in in reality you didn't play king f3 you play king f5 yeah and uh you were actually very good at this at this age but I i'm just gonna try to defend it i feel like what, what advice would you give should i resign here as black or should i try i wouldn't say you should resign you can go you can go a little bit longer e6 is a good move i would say it's not instructional um normally you would move the rook uh give it check from the side first to uh, push the black thing uh to the to the last rank before you start advancing the pawns obviously e6 is excellent as well mm -hmm. well unfortunately if I play king f8, then I'm going to get checked on the back rank. If I move my rook, I'm going to get checked on h7. So not a lot of good options here. I'm just going to move my oh, king, king back. King f8 would be one trick you could try. Oh, shoot. King... No, 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 that's okay. Uh, I will just explain king f6. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm putting it on the board. King f6 yeah, and, rook and then f7. rook f7. Yeah. It's just it, hard incident, to trick this Incidentally, if the white pawn was not an f4, f7 would have been the only way to save the game. If the pawn was not on f4. Interesting. If, let's say the, there was no pawn on f4. Yep. Uh, and after king f8, king f6, rook f7 would be the only way to save the game. Yeah, that's actually a really nice stalemate trap. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I tried king e8, so I didn't even have a chance to trick you at 10. Um, whatever lack of end games you had at age of 10, it's not showing because you're just playing this game very well. Are there any more stalemate traps? Let's try to learn from Magnus, Andrea. Do you see any stalemate uh, there, traps? Uh, I, I like what you're thinking, but it doesn't work here. <laughs> Thanks. Exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to just try rook. I, I, I won't, oops, did I accidentally put in a move? No, uh, let's just try rook b7, see if we have anything here. Because, you know, sometimes computers make funny, funny mistakes. Now I have to try not to get checkmated, so I'll play king, uh, rook b8. But, uh, yeah, this is really unfortunate, Magnus. If I offered you a draw here at age 10 and, and, uh, bribed you with some candy, do you think that would, you know, change the answer, maybe? Uh, maybe if it was Saturday. I only <laughs> ate ca candy on Saturday when I was little. Yeah. Like, I come with a huge basket of candy, it's Saturday, your parents aren't around, would you, would you take the draw offer? I might have. Okay, so we'll, we'll I, I wasn't it actually that competitive life. back then. I wasn't, that, I wasn't that competitive back then. Yeah, gentleman's draw, really. Are you going to play until the end? No, I'm just going to make it instructive, and I'm going to let chat show how he's trading off the rooks here. And now I can't stop the pawn from promoting, so... Yeah, I think I need to just find how to resign on the app, Andrea, and then it's your turn. Bye. Now I know why never worked out before. I know it would 